Hey, have you ever thought about moving Bitcoin over the XRP ledger? Have you even thought that it's possible to move other digital assets over the XRP ledger without using XRP? Still maintain an XRP wallet? Well, there are projects that are being built on the XRP ledger that will actually allow you to move Bitcoin almost instantly for pennies. This is revolutionizing the payment space in general. Not sure if this is going to be the project, but I think it's an important project to look at because we're starting to see more and more like projects that are coming into this space that are DeFi in nature. This is you know, really game changing when you think about full functional use coming to the mainstream, which is payment driven, not necessarily just cross border payment driven, but everyday payment driven. That's what we're going to talk about today. This is Jeff. You're here exclusively on the chain, here on the HODL Review, and we're going to start this show right now. And now, the HODL Review with Jeff on the chain. Boom, and that's how we come back that quick. It's really, really fast. So, yes, we want to get into this whole concept. So there is a new company called Spend the Bits. Spend, Spend the Bits, running off the XRP ledger, using the XRP ledger to move all sorts of crypto. So let's get into it. Let's see how we can transition from here to there. There we go. All right. <laughs> this is good. So we are going to go through this. This is their white paper. We want to dissect this a little bit. You know, first and foremost, I don't know, a lot of white papers, to me, this doesn't really seem so much like a white paper, uh, really no technicals on it. Uh, pretty short, seven pages long. However, I think it's a great presentation to look through because there's some key things that we're going to identify here. Digital cryptocurrency payment wallet that is powered by the XRP ledger. Now, just a little note, as I read through this whole thing, it is only available up in Canada. Um, but let's dig in. So here it says, we're in the progress of launching mobile wallet apps, Spend the Bits, or STB for short, which you're gonna get on iOS and on the Android platform. They like the, they like the concept of internet of value. That is exactly how Ripple is kind of promoting the whole ledger thing, the whole cross-border payment if you're using the ledger. Internet of value, they like that concept. I think it's it's a good uh, it's a good terminology because it's showing that you can actually seamlessly move money, spend money, and it gives you some value. It's done over the internet. <laughs> so what what's unique about this is that they're building on the XRP ledger. Uh, are they using XRP? Not necessarily, but the ledger does offer a lot of unique things, a lot of unique functionality. One of them is being able to seamlessly transact any currency. So built in, baked into the XRP ledger is, all, is an exchange. So through that exchange, you can transact. It moves. It has the capability. And this is how they're doing it. So again, really interesting. Uh, here's their, got their goal, their intro here. It will enable users to spend their cryptocurrency both by sending and receiving as well as store their cryptocurrency. So as you open up a wallet, your keys will actually be kept on your mobile phone by the app. So if you lose your phone, you're pretty much SOL. Well, obviously you're, you're gonna keep a backup uh, to make sure that doesn't happen. Um, however, you don't have to worry about them getting into the wrong hands um, because it's all in the phone. Uh, so that, that's a good starting point, I guess. Uh, but let's look at, they say, why us? So one of the things that they're going to do um, on sign up during the sign up process is do the KYC and AML. Uh, KYC, if you don't know what that is, that's know your customer. AML is anti-money laundering. Um, it should be AMLT, so it'd be like anti-money laundering and terrorism. Um, that's the goal of the KYC AML to get to know a little bit about who's moving money around. You got to know who they are, so you can't just have it all, you know, secretive. 
they want the compliance aspect of it. Compliance is going to be inter is going to be needed, um, especially as we start progressing towards regulation, regulatory clarity. There's going to be certain criteria when you're moving money around, like a banking institution. You need the KYC AML. So it's good that that's first thing out. That's what they're doing. They call it eco-friendly, frictionless, decentralized cryptocurrency digital payment 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 platform. Payment. Uh, so it'd be like platform and payment in one. They're payment. Uh, their payment form, see? <laughs> so here, their objective statement, reduce payment wait from 15 minutes to 10 seconds for transaction settlements. I'm not sure which uh, digital asset or what payment is waiting 15 minutes, um, but if you're waiting 15 minutes for something, I don't know which one it is, um, 10 seconds, that's good. So if you're going STB to STB, so that means that you both have to have the same wallet in order to use this solution. But that's okay, you know, if you're gonna have the same wallet. But what happens if you wanna move it and pay somebody that's off wallet? So I don't see that that's really in here. It looks like this is a uh, STB, uh, spend the bits to spend the bits uh, solution. But here you have a low percentage fee, Bitcoin network transaction. Again, STB to STB. So it's running the XRP ledger, the software, the programming built on the ledger, which is then allowing the payment structure to take place. Think about RippleNet, how RippleNet is built on the XRP ledger. And through RippleNet, the banks need to be using the same software in order to get the communication, in order to get the transaction, the settlement through the ODL, et cetera. So here they're using the XRP ledger, similar fashion. Both parties have to be using the same platform uh, in order to take advantage of uh, the ledger. I like the idea when you're going to get interoperability, when you can transact between wallets where you, you don't have a limitation. So if you're on the XRPL, that through that interoperability, I can go, if someone has a JPM coin wallet, I can be able to, you know, through this idea, if there was interoperable, you could then send to any wallet. You know, that would be nice. But right now, as they start their initial, you know, starting point is STB to STB. So what kind of end user benefits are they offering? Well, you have XRP Ledger. We know through the XRP Ledger, transaction time can be four seconds. Fees are low, uh, 1,500 transactions per second, negligible energy consumption. I like everyone's now focused on energy consumption because when you look at the traditional way of moving Bitcoin, it can be very costly. Um, here it's showing fees that could be $20 per transaction. Um, I'm not sure that's 100% accurate. I guess it would determine how much you're sending. Um, 32 transactions per second, 162 kilowatts per hour per transaction. Proof of work is problematic. Proof of consensus, uh, deterministic. So they're, they're starting to create a little bit of a the XRP ledger is better if you try to do the Bitcoin blockchain network, maybe not so good. That's what they're trying to uh, to promote here. So um, it looks like they have their rollout in July for phase one. They go live with some of the phase one stuff, uh, um, December. So it looks like they're going into their phase two go live. And then by April, they'll be in phase three. So let's see what that means. Phase one, launch digital crypto mobile wallet, Bitcoin only. So as it so it's XRP Ledger, but the only digital asset that you can move right now back and forth is Bitcoin. Uh, okay, so maybe this is a Bitcoin wallet, strictly moving Bitcoin in four seconds cheaply. It's better than sending it through the regular Bitcoin mechanism because you're using the, the XRP Ledger to move it. You know, I guess, I guess that, that does make sense, but it'd be nice maybe you know add an XRP into the solution as well so it's not just XRP it's not just Bitcoin it should be X I don't know why they wouldn't have added XRP at the same time it would make sense XRP seems like it would be you know obvious maybe even have an SDB coin uh, so if you roll out the SDB token maybe that makes sense too um, but here users will be able to store spend send receive Bitcoin facilitate fast and cheaper Bitcoin payments KYC AML we Got went over all that. So in phase two, um, getting more functionality. So are we keeping the same functionality? We're getting merchant payment support. So that that's good. So now you can pay from a merchant perspective. Let's see, 
crypto to crypto and crypto to fiat payments. That's good. Does that mean it's beyond Bitcoin? Still, if this is a white paper, I would think that they would break it down a little bit further and, and go into, yes, you know, uh, we can handle other crypto. Um, let's see, including Bitcoin ATM machines. Oh, Bitcoin ATM machines. Okay. So you got you can use a Bitcoin ATM. Banking integration for direct deposit and withdrawal. Uh, interact. Again, this is only in Canada. Uh, tokenize and convert crypto to fiat for daily operational payment usage. So you want to get to a point where you're actually spending. So now let's go add payment support for Ethereum, Litecoin, and Spendbit apps. So this is in what? April of 2020. Where is XRP? I mean, if you're going to build something on the XRP ledger, wouldn't you roll out XRP? I mean, this doesn't make any sense. I, I don't get it. I really don't get it. Let's look at the website. All right. Let's drill down into the Q&A here. Um, let's see. Difference. Oh, here we go. I have spend the bits wallet app. Can I send Bitcoin to any non XRP ledger based address? Right now, we only support, all right, you can only go STB to STB or STB, wait, or STB to XRP-based Bitcoin address. If you wish to withdraw funds from STB, please sign up on the XRP ledger-based exchange and withdraw funds. So you can go to another exchange as long as it's XRP ledger-based. Um, uh, interesting. So I don't, I don't even know where to go from here. So let's see. How much 20 XRP cost in US dollars? Um, wait a minute. Where's the, oh, here we go. Why spend bit apps, which is XRP. Why spend the bits app, which is XRP ledger based wallet require 20 XRP minimum to activate the wallet. It doesn't seem like the English is a spot on there, but we'll, we'll forego that in a minute. Uh, but 20 XRP is a fixed one-time retainer fee to stop the spamming of the XRP ledger. These 20 XRP will remain locked as enforced by the XRP ledger protocol in order to serve you better. We have automated this process to act. So you're opening up an XRP wallet, but you don't have any XRP in the wallet. But you're able to move Bitcoin through the XRP ledger only on their platform but their white paper doesn't explain anything. Uh, I, I like the idea. I, I like the concept. I, I kind of like the idea of being able to, to create a payable wallet, um, but I'm, I'm just a little bit confused, I guess, you know, about what the overall objective of, uh, of this is. If you're not able to transact XRP, it's not even until, I mean, April, you're looking at Ethereum and, and, uh, and Litecoin, Bitcoin, you can move. You have you have an XRP wallet with no XRP in it, but you have to you have to open it with 20 XRP, but you can't move XRP, unless maybe it was an oversight. I, I mean, I got to believe that's what it is. Um, you know, I I meant to mention this in the very beginning, and I should have I should have done so. I apologize. So if you've watched this all the way through, um, Morton, who is frequent on our on our channel on our live stream. Uh, big shout out to Morton for recommending this this app and, and wanting me to go through it and give some feedback. I probably should have put that way in the beginning uh, as I as I started out. Apologize for that, but big shout out to Morton. Um, really appreciate you throwing this over to me uh, to be able to review this. Um, but again, you know, I like the idea that people are building in the space. I like the idea they're building on the XRP ledger. Um, but as you get into it, I think it's important, hey, if you can move Bitcoin and Ethereum and Litecoin and all these other digital assets through an app over the XRP ledger, and you can do it instantaneously, fiat as well. Um, I, I see that that would have been my immediate rollout. I would have gone to XRP first, Bitcoin, well, Bitcoin and XRP, then bake in some of the others. But I mean, immediately you're you're on the ledger. So you would think that that would make the most sense. You know, I don't know. So anyhow, um, looks like my lighting is a little bit uh, crazy right now. Um, I don't know if you guys see that. Maybe it's just me seeing all the fuzziness uh, based on the lighting is completely way off. But anyhow, you can see I'm like, like highlighted here <laughs> in a weird light. And I got, you know, 
fuzziness all around me. So anyhow, um, really appreciate you guys for watching this. We're going to review some more. If you guys have anything else like this that you want to review, let me know. We'll go through it. We'll give our feedback, honest opinions, honest feedback. Again, this is Jeff here, how to review on the chain. If you want to see our live streams, go to the other channel. Check us out, 8 a.m. Saturday mornings with the how to review, 8 p.m. every Sunday for the roundtable stimulating conversation. I know you guys are going to love it over there. Go check it out, and we'll see you on the next one. Where's that outro? Are you down with OTC? Please like, subscribe, and click the bell to be notified when the next video drops.